Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at estimating values by rounding to one significant figure. Here we have a question which is 386 times 22 divided by 78. Now I wouldn't expect you to be able to do this quite quickly without some kind of method for long multiplication and long division. However, we're asked to estimate it, not work out the exact value. So when we're estimating, we make the numbers nice for ourselves so we can do them quickly. Let's have a look at this question and how we'd go about tackling it. 386 times 22. Well, 386, well that's very, very close to 400. So I'm going to make that number 400. And then 22 is pretty close to 20. So, what do you think we could do with the bottom one? I think that's pretty close to 80. So let's have a go at changing that to 80 and see what this actually gives us when we do this. So, we've got 400 times 20. Well, 4 times 2 is 8 and there are 3 zeros. And that is divided by 80. So we'll do we'll cancel out the zeros first. So one from the bottom, one from the top. There's no more zeros I can cancel out. So therefore I've got 800 divided by 8. Well, that's going to give us 100. So the answer we would give is 100. The estimated value of the original question is 100. Now, you may notice I've no, mentioned nothing about significant figures in my explanation there. But if we go back to what I did, then I'll talk you through where the significant figures come into place. If we look at 386, I rounded that to 400. Well, why did I do that? Because to one significant figure, I've got 386, and to one significant figure, I cut it down here, so that 8 makes that 3 a 4, so it's 400 to one significant figure. Same with the 22. I'm keeping the first value, so I'm cutting it here, and that 2 doesn't do anything to the 20, so to one significant figure, that is 20. And the same for 78. I'm cutting it down here, so that 8 makes that 70 an 80. So to one significant figure, that is 80. So, I've actually rounded to one significant figure just by making the numbers nice for myself. So when a question asks you to round to one significant figure, just making the numbers nice for yourself will usually be making them to one significant figure. Here's a question I would like you to have a go at yourself. I want you to pause the video and then come back to it where I will go through the method that you should have used. So pause the video now and in a second I will go through the answer. Okay, here's the answer to the question I've just set. We, I gave you 536 times 64 divided by 275. So let's start by rounding these to one significant figure and making the numbers nice for ourselves. So we've got 536, well that's 500, and we've got 64 which is 60, and 275 which is 300. So if we then rewrite the question to see what we've got, we've got 500 times 60 and we've got 300 on the bottom. 500 times 60. Well, 5 times 6 is 30, and that's with three zeros. And that's over 300. So, let's sort the zeros out first. One there, one there, one there, one there. And we've left with 300 divided by 3, which gets me 100. So this is the answer that we would give. Now don't worry if your answer is just either side of that answer. Because in an exam, the examiners will be given a range of answers to accept. 
The only thing they won't accept is when you've ridiculously rounded your numbers, say 536 rounded up to 1,000, because that then makes this estimate nowhere near as accurate as what we've got here. However, if you rounded this to 600, say, then you probably wouldn't be penalised that much because your answer is still within the acceptable region. And that is how we estimate a value of an answer just by rounding to one significant figure. And this method is great for checking your answers in exams and tests. By rounding your numbers you can then see if your answer is roughly the same as what you should be getting if you estimate it.